Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the fantasy football counselor. In this episode, we're talking about NFL free agency, fantasy football winners and losers. We're going to recap all of the free agency moves and, of course, the fantasy relevance to them. Big episode, lots to cover. Let's get to it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you want to go hard? So you want to be the greatest? Your life is a fantasy and it's all for the taking. Cause this time is down and I gotta get it. I'm a beast, I'm a freak when it come to winning. Eyes on the prize of the television. Yeah. Oh, no push, no boom, your push. So you want to go hard? All right, welcome to the show. And Tim's not here to do the dance, but he's on the phone. Tim, are you doing the dance at home? I am. I'm dancing in isolation. So, you know, if you could see me, I would look really special. Tim is under quarantine. Apparently, he is in uh, full, uh, what is it, uh, boxer briefs, or is it just briefs right now? No, man. I'm wearing, like, some comfy pajama bottoms, a t-shirt and sweater. I'm, I'm like, just chilling. Too much detail. Anyway, listen, Tim, this is important. Free agency has happened. You know, I know there's a Corona thing going on. There's no sports, but free agency has been keeping the sports news waves going because there's been a lot of moves and we want to cover that. I did a show with Tom Santanello uh, covering it, but we want to do the the winners and losers here for fantasy relevance. Are you ready? You've got your notes. You're ready to go. I'm ready, man. And let's just say, I mean, it was exciting. Quite a few big names changed teams, especially quarterbacks. We had many quarterbacks moving around, some huge, some who cares. Just there's a lot of moves, a lot of things to talk about. All right, let's move along through it. The first thing we want to talk about are the winners and losers. Let's talk about the uh, Larry Fitzgerald now being teamed up with DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins now in Arizona. I'm going to say this is a winning situation for the Cardinals in a sense that they've got now their air raid offense and they've got one of the best receivers in the game to benefit from that. Uh, what would you say for this one? Definitely winners are uh, the Cardinals and Hopkins here. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it, it's not going to be a great thing for Fitzgerald or Christian Kirk, but as far as the team goes on um, Arizona, adding DeAndre is huge, man. I mean, the guy's a proven number one, top three talent. My concern here, Tim, is is there going to be enough volume? I believe Larry Fitzgerald had 109 targets last season. Though he, you know, Kyler spreads the ball around. So is Hopkins going to get 150 targets? That's my concern. So I'm thinking there may be a bit of a decline in Hopkins' numbers based on last year. Because, again, he had that rapport uh, with Watson on the other team, on the Texans. So I don't know, man. I think it's maybe a losing situation for Hopkins slightly from a fantasy perspective, but an overall team reality win for the Cardinals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You said it perfectly. So fantasy points-wise, DeAndre may actually go down a little, but I would say only a little. I mean, you know, he's he's the man. He's going to be the man there as well. So he's going to be fed well, but he still may lose a little. He has to share with a few more guys. All right, let's move on here. Now let's talk about David Johnson to the Texans because that's all part of the trade. I think the Texans win here in regards to fantasy because he's going to do a lot better than Carlos Hyde did. Carlos Hyde, 245 attempts last year, not even fantasy relevant, didn't do anything. David Johnson now with a chip on his shoulder, knowing that he lost the job to, to, to Kenyon Drake, I would be angry, I would be bitter, and I'm gonna, I got something to prove here, and I think it's going to be exciting for fantasy if he gets the volume there uh, in Houston. Is this a fantasy win for you, Tim, for the Texans? This is a fantasy win for David Johnson. I don't care about a fantasy win for the Texans as a team. As far as a team move, you know, they. I don't think it's going to be a huge improvement for them personally. They could make do with the running backs they had. Uh, for David Johnson, I think this is an opportunity to get back to where he was in 2016, man. I think the team is going to use him for the receiving game as well as running a lot. So he's got the opportunity here to really put up some big numbers again. But does he have it in him? You know, we've got to see those first couple of weeks play out to see if this is if this can be the David Johnson of old. Yeah, I'm not excited about uh, the Randall Cobb though to the Texans. He went over there as well, and 27 million dollars, 18.75 guaranteed. I think it's for uh, two to three years. I'm not exactly sure. Randall Cobb is a guy that maybe could be a PPR machine. But I don't know, man. I mean, that is a fantasy loss. But again, maybe a deep sleeper. Maybe he can have a a resurgence there and come back as well. Randall Cobb doesn't excite me. No, nothing. that's exactly what I say. Not really exciting. His prime days are past him. I mean, he can still be a good WR2, WR3. 
that's all he's worth at this point. It doesn't matter where he goes. Uh, let's move on here. I'm just moving down the list of all the teams. Atlanta Falcons get rid of Devontae Freeman. I think wherever he ends up, I'm not excited about him. So we're going to have to see what the Falcons do at the running back position. I would say, you know, no win or loss there. I mean, I think Atlanta as a team wins because I think, the uh, you know, Freeman, is he got incentivized years ago, and I think he lost his edge. So I'm not sure your thoughts on that. No, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think he's still a good pickup for a lot of teams. You know, he could be part of a one-two punch. I don't think his fantasy numbers will be great, but he's still a, a decent RB2 with RB1 potential. Depends on who they get him and how they use him. Quite frankly, I'm thinking Buffalo would be an awesome fit for him. Right. Now let's go to Buffalo because we're moving on here. Josh Allen, this is a huge fantasy football win for Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. I think this is a great combination. Buffalo obviously in need of a wide receiver to pair up with Brown. I think Stephon Diggs could really thrive in Buffalo. This is a fantasy football win for not only Allen, but I think for Diggs as well. Yeah, I mean, Diggs has always been a really good performer anyways, and he's going to put up some solid numbers no matter where he is. It's a great opportunity for Josh Allen. Last year, we were saying, you know, Josh Allen seems to be a really good quarterback. We just need to give him some good weapons. We need to see what he can do with some guys. Well, now he's got a guy. If he can't make it work with Stefan Diggs, then he will not be a prime quarterback. And what I like here, honestly, is that Diggs doesn't have to contend with Thielen. So this is a huge win now. And I like that where you have a, a wide receiver that doesn't have that equally as good wide receiver beside him. Now you could get more fantasy points. Again, if Josh Allen gravitates to him, okay? Uh, yeah, Diggs is a clear-cut number one on this team. Let's not uh, mix words there. He should see the ball a lot, but it's, you know, can Josh Allen put it there and put it there consistently? Moving down the list here, Carolina Panthers. Uh, now Teddy Bridgewater agreed to a $63 million contract, which includes $33 million fully guaranteed. Teddy Bridgewater, I know you're not high on him. He did show some flashes of potential upside and greatness for a fantasy perspective. I liked him on the Saints when Breeze was down. Now, the big question is, how is it going to translate? Is uh, CMC going to get a bunch of receptions? Looking at Kamara, he had about 30-ish attempts, attempted passes from Bridgewater and about five, six games. So it's not a huge amount of volume. So I'm wondering if Teddy throws the ball more. And again, the loser here is Cam Newton. we got to see where he ends up. But I think this could be a fantasy win for the receivers. But I'm assuming that the Panthers bring in and, and draft an ace wide receiver again to pair up with more because I'm not sold on more being the guy. But what do you think of this situation? I think it's a win for the receivers of Carolina. I I don't know, man. I mean, one of the things with Carolina is you could rely on Cam Newton to scramble around to make things happen. So, you know, they have their, their big guy. They have CMC. After that, things start falling off. So now you've brought in Teddy Bridgewater. I personally am not impressed with him. I don't think he's going to be that quarterback. I, I don't see this as a, as a better move for Carolina at all. You know, if anything, it's just new blood. I don't see him being able to replace what Cam Newton does. Right, and I, I don't know if Bridgewater's got the receivers. Now, looking at their needs, they need a cornerback, they need a D-line, they need an O-line. If they address those needs first, I'm wondering if the wide receiver is going to take a back seat. So now, I don't know, man. They've got Seth Roberts signing a new deal with the Panthers. Terms not disclosed yet. Seth Roberts doesn't excite me. You know, DJ Moore doesn't excite me. So I think Bridgewater would need better weapons for him to be more fantasy relevant. I'm not excited, really, but... I, they need a receiver. That's my opinion. I I think, if anything, to me, this is a step back for Carolina as a team. I, You know, at least with Cam Newton, you had a name. You had a big-name guy. Like I say, a guy who could scramble around, who could make things happen when they weren't there. I don't think Teddy's got that. Now, Nick Foles acquired in a trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He goes to the Bears now, okay, for a fourth-round pick, number 140 overall. So... Foles now with the Bears, a lot of Bears fans unhappy. Now, I don't know, man, if Mitch Trubisky doesn't really, you know, perform at all. Apparently, he's slated as a starter, but apparently also Nick Foles has a lot of rapport with Nagy. They've worked together. It's going to be very interesting to see how this pans out, who's going to be the starter. But as soon as Mitch, he's got to be on a short leash with, leash with Nick Foles there. But a lot of people not happy. The Bears fans thinking Cam Newton should have been a better option here for more upside. 
for a fantasy perspective, this could be a win if Foles comes in and starts gelling with the receivers, but a lot of question marks here. Yeah, if they're going to stick with Trubisky at the beginning here, it's one of those things where if he starts to fall a little, if his numbers aren't there, the team's not winning, make the change, go with Foles, give him that opportunity, and Foles better bring his A game and he better sustain it. You know, like we've seen him have some really good flashes of brilliance, but right. never a sustained period of time. And that's kind of what he's been lacking, you know, for his career so far. Give him the shot if uh, Trubisky starts falling, but he, he better bring it, man. He better be able to move everything along. I don't want to spend too much time on this as well. Jimmy Graham signing a two-year deal worth $16 million. doesn't excite me. That is a fantasy football loss. I'm not excited about Graham over the hill. I mean, he might get four or five, six touchdowns if he's lucky. I'm Again, this is a fantasy loss to me. I'm not going to touch him. Yeah, like you say, it's, it's just not even worth it. He's, he's basically in the twilight of his career. He's, you know, he's there. He's going to get some work. He's going to get things done. He's, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he's that give me 10 points type guy. Another fantasy football potential win. A.J. Green now placed on a franchise tag with the Bengals. He wanted to leave. Now he's staying. Apparently, if they draft Joe Burrow first overall, this could be a ton of upside for um, A.J. Green. Obviously, the biggest needs right now for the Bengals is a quarterback followed by an O-line and then then a linebacker. But I'm thinking here, A.J. Green could have some fantasy upside. This could be a win for fantasy. Again, A.J. Green a little bit over the hill because he's been injured for the past little while, right? But again, he could see a bit of a boost with Joe Burrow this year. No. No, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't give anything to incoming quarterbacks hitting it right off. You know, I think AJ Green stays right where he was with last year's numbers, you know, slight movement up or down as possible, but nothing, nothing crazy. No 40, 50 point difference. Right. Well, he's been injured for a while, so I don't know what he's going to do. So AJ Green, maybe. Who knows? There could be some upside there if Burrow comes along. Let's move along here. Austin Hooper to the Browns. I think this hurts him. I think he had that rapport with Matt Ryan. This is a fantasy loss, especially with a ton of mouths to feed. Kareem Hunt, the team placed a second round tender on him. On a, uh, he's a restricted free agent. Um, now, I don't know, man. There's going to be a ton of volume. Odell, Landry, Kareem Hunt catching the ball in backfield if he stays. Dick Chubb getting the ball. I don't like this at all. Now, the mainstream can sheeps us are saying this is a high octane offense yet again because Hooper is there now. Like, come on, man. This is getting old now, to be honest. Well, no, you can't deny the fact that there are weapons there, man. I yeah. mean, this team has everything they should need as far as offense goes to make it to the Super Well, let's not say the Super Bowl, maybe. Everything except Baker Mayfield. All the guys are there, the receivers, the running back, the tight end now. I mean, they've got some top guys available to them. They've just got to make it work. They need O-line. That's their biggest need. Improve the O-line, give Baker more time to throw the ball, and then the excuses are going to be gone. But I need to see this before I believe it. So, again, Hooper, I think that's a loss for him. Kareem Hunt, if he stays, that's a win for him. It's a drop down for Nick Chubb. And they acquired Case Keenum, a guy that just kind of sucks now, man. I don't even know why. Three years, $18 million, including $10 million guaranteed. I don't like that, man. Case Keenum sucks. And I don't know. I mean, Baker, if he sucks too, he could be on a short leash as well. But get a good backup, not Case Keenum. That's my opinion. No, nah, I think no matter what, they've made the commitment. They're staying with Baker Mayfield, man. He would have to really poop the bed in order for them to pull him. So Case Keenum is there. He's going to see such limited play time. You know, I don't have a problem with the pickup of him. All right, moving on to the Cowboys here. Cooper signed a big five-year, $100 million contract while Dak remains placed on a franchise tag. Man, this is crazy. You see guys like Tannehill getting paid and Carson Wentz and now Dak Prescott, I mean, getting tagged now, I think that's a bit of a slap to the face. I mind you, he's going to get a lot of money, but still for the year, but still, man, I don't know. I mean, it could be a win for Amari Cooper yet again. I think he's going to do well, but again, incentivized wide receiver versus hungry wide receiver. This is going to be a tricky situation, something to watch. Yeah, this, this is... I, th- I think it's still good. I think as far as the Cowboys go, man, they're making all the moves they feel they have to make in order to keep a good team on the field. So really, they're not seeing any changes. What's happened so far? I mean, the real big thing is Jason Witten leaving. Who gives a crap? I think uh, Blake Jarwin can easily fill his shoes. So right now, to me, the Cowboys are going to be the same Cowboys they were last year. Right. 
Um, moving on here, Philip Rivers agreed to a one-year deal worth $25 million. So not fully invested in Philip Rivers, understandably so, older guy. They want to test him out, feel him out. But Philip Rivers, this could be a boost to the wide receivers of the Colts. And their first need, in my opinion, is wide receiver. So they need somebody to compliment T.Y. Hilton. This could be good. So any wide receiver coming in lined up with Hilton could have immediate fantasy impact. But this could be a plus, a fantasy football win for me for the wide receiver position and maybe even Rivers. I mean, but it also I also think, Tim, this is more of a side move. I don't think it's an up move for Phillip Rivers as well because I still think they need a running back. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. This is just a sidestep for Rivers. Personally, I don't see his numbers changing up or down much. Like you say, it, it is an improvement, I think, for the receivers of the Colts. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's my deal, man. Don't see any real change in his numbers. He will continue to be safe and boring. And there's nothing wrong with that when you're talking Philip Rivers. Safe and boring. He puts up decent numbers day in, day out, and he's always there at the end of the season. Right. Um, who else we talk about? You know, Derrick Henry tagged. You know, I think that's a win for fantasy if he stays there. Damian Williams is kept on the team as well. I think they're going to draft another running back. Be careful there. Uh, if you're looking at Damian well, Williams next season, I think there's going to be a running back that's going to – I don't think they believe in Williams. Okay, well, there's still a few that we've got to talk about, especially you got to talk about Tom Brady and Tampa. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's huge. Now, I did a whole show on that, guys. I'm going to link it below on the fantasy impact of Tom Brady there. I think it's a win. I think it's a win across the board. Now, again, the problem is, and I talk about this in the video, I don't want to drag it on too much. Just go watch the video. But it, he gravitates for to a certain person. Who is going to be that guy? I, I, the spreading of the ball is going to happen, but he always tends to gravitate to one guy more than the other guy. So there's a gap. So like Edelman would be like at 150 targets compared to the guy next to him would be like at 90 targets. So I'm wondering if it's going to be like that. Is he going to gravitate towards Godwin, Evans? What's going to happen? There's rumors that Antonio Brown will be there. What are your thoughts on this, man? It's a bit of a disaster there. I mean, it's good for fantasy, but yeah. it, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's like, who is he going to, who is he going to gravitate to? Yeah, I'm not calling this a disaster in any way. This is a huge jump up for Tampa, man. I mean, adding a name like Tom Brady, for one thing, he's got a couple of great receivers to work with. So the transition from New England to Tampa, to me, it's not going to be that big a deal for Brady as far as the weapons that he has around him. He's going to make it work, and they're going to be an improved team by far. The only question mark really is Rojo. You know, has he finally matured enough? Is he going to no. be that good back? Is he going to run a lot? Is he going to be able to catch more now? Rojo's done. That I think they're going to get somebody else. There's no way. There's no way he's going to stay there. Look for uh, Melvin Gordon, Gurley. I mean, any one of these guys could move into some of these spots. Even the Bills are looking at possibly Melvin Gordon. There's rumors there, right? By the time of this well, recording, yeah, guys. need a good running back, yeah. By the time of this recording, we don't know yet. So, um, yeah, I mean, Devin Singletary could, you know, get his fantasy value ruined. So can Ronald Jones. But what I mean by mess is, like, I just don't know. We don't know who's going to be the primary target there. Now, James White had 95 targets last year, okay? So the running back is going to get fed, and that's going to take away from the receiver. So now that the mainstream consensus have Godwin Nevins in the top 10, I think that's ridiculous, especially with Brady there now. It's going to be hard for them to both finish top 10. There's not enough targets to go around. Yeah, you might be right there, but I still say this is a huge win for the team. I think everybody's going to do well. You might see a little more of a difference between the wide receiver one, wide receiver two, but I still think they're both going to do very well. I think this is a huge win for Tampa, man. And not like I say, it, it adds a big name to them. It creates a lot of excitement for them. Well, I think they're Super Bowl bound for sure. But uh, in regards to fantasy, I still have some question marks. That's that's my big deal. That's the big deal going on right now. Um, and here's a loss for me. I, I don't care for him. But Jordan Howard going to Miami, Tim. I mean, I'm not excited at all. I mean, they yeah. need, <laughs> they need a good running back there i don't think uh i don't think that's going to be the answer for them yeah i i say the same thing not thrilled who cares we'll put up typical numbers of 12 to 15 a game on average that's pretty much all you can expect there um or right, anyone else we need to cover tim in regards to uh, i think yeah i think we should talk about hayden hurst to the falcons i think that's a pretty big deal could I be upside nice addition for the falcons yeah I think I think he'd be good value mid to later rounds. I think a lot of people sleep on him, but if Ryan utilized him the way that he utilized Hooper, yes, huge fantasy football value. He's get, he's going to get into an opportunity where we've seen a proven track record of tight end doing well. 
this could be exciting, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's got top five tight end potential. Right. Uh, who else do we not cover? We talk about Dak. We talk. Well, to- here's a boring one that kind of pisses me off. You know, I, I'm not a huge Raiders fan, but I like the Raiders and Marcus Mariota going to the Raiders. That's like, a lo- pointless. I mean, this is the thing, right? You, not only should you be replacing Derek Carr with a better quarterback, now you go get a worse quarterback than Derek Carr and back. Like it's just crazy. That's working backwards, man. I don't like that at all. That's a waste. It's kind of like Case Keenum, man. I, those guys washed up. I don't yeah, like. Like, what, what are you doing here? You've got a battle of the two mediocre quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I'm sure Derek Carr is still going to be the man, but why the hell would you bring in a Marcus Mariota who's kind of on the same plane? Like you say, maybe even slightly under. Yeah, I just see it as a ridiculous waste. Apparently, the Raiders and they they liked them. They liked them coming out of the draft, and they had this thing for them. I don't know, man. It's just I don't. I'm not sold on it. I think it sucks. I think it's a waste of time. And I think that sends them backwards. You want to move forwards. I hate these redundant moves, these moves that don't mean anything, like the Jimmy Grahams. Like, go find somebody else, man. It's, I don't know. They just want to secure their ta- some proven talent in certain areas. That's all it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, so one more thing that we do need to talk about, even though it's not really a, a move, it's uh, just Ryan Tannehill staying with the Titans. You know, I, I say who cares? You're, you're going to see the same team you saw last year. That's essentially my thoughts on it. You know, they did fairly well. Expect them to do fairly well again this year. $118 million to hand the ball off to Derrick Henry. I think that is the biggest waste of money I've ever seen. Now, mind you, that's not all guaranteed, but what is he getting guaranteed? $62 million fully guaranteed. That That's, I don't know, man. He's just not worth it to me. He had half a good season out of six years. You know, I yeah. th- I'm not sold. salaries are, are getting insane. Like, so... Pretty much any quarterback now can expect thirty to forty million dollars a year. That's pretty impressive. And I understand it. I mean, the planet is worth how many? How many people on the planet? Seven, eight, ten billion? Who knows? Whatever the planet population is, it keeps going up and down. But listen, there's only twenty good, viable, usable quarterbacks on the planet that you can plug in there, right? So it's a supply and demand thing. But I don't think Tannehill is a guy that can do it for me. He's not going to take them all the way. And I would not invest $118 million on a guy that had half a good season his entire career. What a waste of money. Yeah, I think they're at least playoff bound, but I I would agree. I don't think they can take it all the way. All right. So there's your winners Uh, and losers. One one last little boring one. (laughs) Really, Nobody wants the boring ones. Greg Olson to Seattle. Nobody cares. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Career's almost over. Uh, watch him have like 10 touchdowns and 800 yards next season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. And then he, he retires. Not on my team this year, man. I could care less. So, man, yeah. there's a lot of moves. And, again, this keeps it exciting now in the time of uncertainty with the virus and all that stuff. So why not talk about this stuff? And, uh, you know, st- gives us something to talk about, right? Yeah, for sure. As we lead up to the yeah, draft. A, it's still important stuff, man. I mean, football is going to happen this year, no doubt about it. So we still got to talk. You still got to look at all these things. Absolutely. Those are your Fantasy Football 2020 winners and losers for the NFL free agency. Okay? So, yeah, exciting moves. I'm, I'm excited to see how these offense all come together. I'm excited to watch Tampa Bay next year. I'm, I can't believe I said that. I'm excited to watch Tampa Bay next year. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm excited to watch the Browns next year. There's a couple of teams I'm really excited to watch and see. How, the Bills. I'm excited to watch the Bills. They can now take that division now. With Tom Brady being shipped off, the Patriots aren't going to be the same team. Bills are now the favorite potentially in that division. It's going to be exciting, man. I can't wait. Absolutely. I mean, who are they competing with? Ooh, Miami, the Jets. I mean, they got they're going to take that division. So, it's going to be exciting to see the Bills coming back. Remember the 90s? Boy, I love losing Super Bowls, losing all those Super Bowls in a row. Could it be the Bills coming back again? The 90s all over again. I had that big running back and they're there. Yeah, they need that big running back. I don't think Singletary is the guy. So, man, thanks Tim for calling in. Stay under quarantine. Everybody stay safe. Wash your hands out there. And uh, we're going to keep the content coming to you. Make sure you guys click subscribe and leave your questions below. Tim, we're going to start answering some questions for some of these listeners soon, some of the top questions that we like. Absolutely. All right, Tim, thanks for being here. Thanks, guys, for being here. We will see you guys next video. And again, subscribe. We'll talk soon. All right, have a good one, everybody.